Hello to on the grid on the Inside Politics Austria channel. This is the 150 episode of our series and this guy is Bernhard Kast oder in German Bernhard Kast and in Austrian Magister Diplom Ingenieur Bernhard Kast. And why I say this? Because he is one of Austria's finest YouTubers uh, with about 380 to 400,000 uh, subscribers and uh, you are a military history guy or a military history visualist guy yeah hello thank you for having me um, yeah I'm Bernard Kast I studied computer science and history at the University of Salzburg and in 2016 in January I started my first channel uh, military history And shortly afterwards, I named you Military History Visualized, and now I have around 380,000 subscribers. And on my second channel, Military History Not Visualized, around 40,000 subscribers. And both are, of course, in English. And I usually use academic sources and make them more, yeah, more appreciable by the public. I use a lot of quotes so that people see, okay, that's not fake history, that's from academics or something. And yeah, that's what basically I do. Basically, uh, so what you're doing on your channel and what's the idea of of the complete concept of military history visualized? Well, what was the complete concept? I mean, the the channel, I mean, I said that my first channel actually was not my first channel, it was the first successful channel. It basically, I can't really remember, it happened kind of out of an accident. I think originally I wanted to do an infographics on German Panzer production. And then I kind of made it into a video. And then I uploaded it. And it was very successful from the get-go. I saw this because my previous channels had very lackluster results. And I just continued doing this. And I mean, the concept changed completely. Originally, I was just doing videos and military history stuff I, I liked. Then I went more down the visualized route with data visualization, basically. So using tanks instead of numbers. And about one year ago, I go, went way deeper into quoting academic literature. Because before I didn't do this very much, I had one or two quotes. And now I have sometimes up to 20 quotes in one video. So, and again, now I'm shifting to a different approach again. Or I'm thinking about going a bit more again on the data side, but it's not yet fully established. So, the thing is completely in development all the time but the basic idea was to provide a simple understanding of various military history aspects and questions and also I'm an engineer for me it's all about understanding so I basically want to get the basic factors down the basic elements you need to basic to make a computer game for instance or to understand the conflict or certain aspects organization how was a and Panzer Division organized. Why was it made this way and the other aspects. So one of my patrons actually noted he really likes my systemized approach to history. Because for instance I dislike chronology. What happened A so in this sequence I usually don't do this. Sometimes I have it but yeah I don't like it. I also don't go too much into battles. For me it's always why explaining and understanding. So more the I think the engineering approach. Uh, so you say the engineering approach is your goal or your approach to, to do your work. Uh, what is it in principle or also in specific terms uh, what you're looking for in your stories, in your videos? Yeah, basically it's to, to explain certain elements and to... I mean, there's a lot of data out there and I have to reduce the complexity. And also make it understandable for the channel people. But also some people know that I really like what you explain because the layman can understand it. But people who know already quite a lot of stuff don't feel like they're treated like idiots. And for me, for instance, when I did, I did the campaign of Poland, uh, Fallweis, in 1939. And usually it starts with the shots of the Westerplatte because this is where the first shots fired there. I completely ignored this because for the whole campaign, this is irrelevant and the major few of the aspects. And for me, is reducing complexity or another approach is I rarely mention the names of the channels. I mention a function. 
usual chief of general staff, the commander of sixth army or something. I mean, there's, there's certain differences. For instance, with very known persons, you, you, I, I sometimes use the name, or in some cases. But generally, I try to avoid the, the, a lot of the names because it's unnecessary detail, in my opinion. In most cases, that people forget anyway. And and certainly, history, as I made a video about it, is not about dates. It's about, in my opinion, about understanding. And you need to understand the the, the sequence. But the causality, not necessarily the exact date. You just need, okay, event A happened before B, and this led to a certain degree to event C, but not A happened on this day, B on this, and the other way. Okay, that sounds very interesting, but also very resourceful, because I heard in the video that you uh, work about 8 to 12 hours for your research uh, per video, per story. Was it? Uh, what is true on that? I mean, a video takes. I think the longest video so far was um, how Germany treated, uh, cheated Versailles. I think this was around in total more than 40 hours. Okay. I mean, it's also one of the longest videos. I think it's around 25 minutes or something, or even 30. I, I forgot. And I mean, a lot of aspect goes into designing. A lot of aspect goes into scripting and reading. Does also take quite a lot of time. But for a certain aspect, um, reading, I can go back what I already know sometimes. I mean, this for instance, when I do a video on the Second World War, it's way easier because I know the conflict to a certain degree. For instance, when I do something on medieval stuff, I have to double check a lot of stuff or get stuff right and look it up again and, and sometimes the basics or make sure, okay, I don't make an error here. And for the design aspect, sometimes I can use certain elements I had already and in some cases I can't. And scripting, yeah, that, I mean, scripting was originally in 2016 the hardest part, and now it's not not the easiest. But when I sit down, it's it usually gets done rather fast. And originally, I disliked that part the most and liked designing most. And now it's the other way around. And how long do you need for a design process for scripting, for write down your I mean, ideas? Design is about 25 percent. Reading usually. The, the problem is reading and scripting is hard, sometimes hard to distinguish from each other because usually in the scripting aspect, I reread re re a lot of parts and in depth and control again or check it with other sources. So scripting and reading together takes up probably 50 to 70 percent of the time. Okay. And yeah, and then you say 50 50 or something. I mean, it really depends on the topic. There are some topics I. I don't have to do much reading because I know most stuff and I just need to check the sources and find the quotes or some, some other stuff or reuse certain parts from previous videos. I mean, I did more than 250 videos. By that point, you, you can Me too. <laughs> reuse certain aspects. Yeah, but uh, I wrote 200 scripts for that. Yeah. So, so, so it's a lot of, it's probably a few hundred pages. Yeah. In, in not with the academic uh, spacing, but with the regular spacing. Yeah. Uh, Chief Ten, also a very successful YouTuber, mentioned last time when you met him in Bovington that you're working on a book or yeah, that yeah, you yeah. have plans well, on yeah, working yeah. on a book. I, yeah, I'm currently, uh, which after Bovington, uh, I, I mailed around and said, okay, we need to change the topic. And because it was, I, I had, I have, I think I had written the first chapter or sub chapter at Bovington at, at that time, but uh, I, I saw, okay, this took way too long. I mean, initially it took a subject I didn't have any knowledge about, so I see how long it would take. I said, okay, well, I think we changed the topic of the whole book. And I said, okay, he agrees. And, and now, yeah, it's in the works and probably come out at some point. But I would say, I think, yeah, about 10% of the draft is done. I mean, okay. the structure is completely there. And in some cases, some chapters I just wrote down and in a few hours and for others now I'm doing more research and it crawls ahead very slowly so it really depends on what topic and, and how deep I go into it if you like this video please comment share and subscribe to my channel thank you very much